Water, water everywhere about which we rarely think. For a substance that is integral to life as we know it, most of us don't spend a lot of time thinking about water until something happens to it, as was the case in Flint, Michigan, Jackson, Mississippi, Puerto Rico, and numerous First Nations reserves in Canada in recent memory. But even when you do know about your water and where it comes from, there are still a lot of surprising water facts that you might be missing. Number 10. NYC water has tiny crustaceans in it. Over 8 million people live in New York City, and you have to assume most of them are making use of the city's water supply each and every day. There's a good chance that not all of them are aware their water has tiny crustaceans living in it, though. These little critters are a kind of shrimp known as copper pods, and they are microscopic. People have been drinking them for years with no knowledge of that fact. Someone on Reddit posted a photo of one in 2010 and caused a minor uproar, but that wasn't the first time. In 2004, the same thing happens with people fearful that the little crustaceans would not be kosher for the city's orthodox Jewish population. The city was not willing to filter them out because of the benefits of keeping them and recommended those who didn't want them to filter the water on their own. The crustaceans aren't there for no reason, though. The city keeps them there on purpose. It's their job to help eat the larvae of mosquitoes. Number 9. Cornfields sweat as much as 4,000 gallons a day. When you're doing a lot of physical work on a hot day, it can start to feel pretty gross as sweat starts saturating your clothing. But know, at least, that you're in good company when it comes to sweat, as even corn has to succumb to it once in a while. Although, if you hate humid days, then maybe you should blame the corn, because their sweat is a major contributor to that. Corn plants release water through their leaves in the heat, which seems entirely normal. However, corn grown in massive crops can lead to a stunning amount of water evaporating into the air. A single acre of corn can lead to three to 4,000 gallons of water per day entering the atmosphere. For some context, the US grows about 90 million acres of corn. That works out to 360 billion gallons of water per day. You can see how this corn sweat can be responsible for making the fields of middle America inexplicably more humid than places like Florida at the right time of year. That's why some heat waves end up feeling worse. Number 8. A drop of water may stay in the ocean for 3,000 years. Most of us are aware of the water cycle and the concept of water evaporating, condensing, precipitating, and so on. But there is a heck of a lot of water in the world, so understanding how water in general works is easy, but understanding how water in specific works might not be. And by that, we mean what about the life cycle of one single specific molecule of water? How does that water's life play out? A drop of water can spend about nine days in the atmosphere before it comes down to Earth again. But on the Earth, it may not move again for a long time. That one specific drop could end up in the ocean and remain there for another 3,000 years before it evaporates again. And while that seems like a long time, it's the blink of an eye compared to water that ends up in a place like the Antarctic ice shelf. If water freezes there, it's going to stay there for about 900,000 years. Number 7. It takes 90 days for a drop of water to travel the Mississippi River. Speaking of water drops, if one is staying in the ocean for 3,000 years, how long do other drops stay in places like rivers which are fast moving? For a Mississippi water drop, the pace is fast, but maybe not as fast as you'd think. For a drop of water that starts at Lake Itasca and travels all the way down the 2,350 mile trek to the Gulf of Mexico, it takes about 90 days. The river is not exactly a fast moving body of water in most places, but at the start of the flow, it's a mere 1.2 miles an hour. And it's up to to three miles per hour as it reaches the Gulf. It's fairly inconsistent down the length and often depends on factors like river depth and width. Number 6. Volcanoes can dump millions of gallons of water into the atmosphere. Water is not something we usually associate with volcanoes. When they blow, it's smoke and ash and dangerously hot lava that spews forth, and it seems like water would have no chance in such an environment. But that's not true at all, and in fact, massive amounts of water vapor are released when a volcano erupts. Those massive clouds you've seen arising from volcanoes in photos are not often smoke at all. Or not just smoke. On January the 15th, 2022, a volcano in Tonga erupted. The difference between this eruption and many others was that the Tonga volcano was in the ocean. So in addition to sulfur and the other elements spewed forth in a volcanic blast, the water of the surrounding ocean was caught up in it. So much water vapor was released into the atmosphere as a result of the eruption that scientists believe it will be altering worldwide climate patterns for years. In fact, it released 10% of the volume of water vapor that normally exists in the entire stratosphere, or about 50 million tons. That's believed to have boosted atmospheric moisture by about 5% globally, 
rapidly and, as a result, could warm the planet as opposed to cooling it like volcanoes normally do. Number 5. Groundwater far outstrips glaciers as water reservoirs on Earth We know that there are many places in the world where we can find water if we need it. The oceans obviously hold a lot, but glaciers have long been considered a reserve of fresh water alongside groundwater sources. But it's only recently that scientists have learned that groundwater may be a far more abundant source of water than previously thought, vastly outpacing glaciers in terms of volume. The current estimates of groundwater account for depths down to 10 kilometers. Previously, groundwater reserves had only been measured down to about 2 kilometers. Anything deeper was not well studied and hard to determine, but technological improvements have allowed for better estimates of what may be further below the surface. The current estimates are that we have about 43.9 million cubic kilometers of groundwater reserves. The new data makes groundwater the second largest source of water in the world, surpassing the Antarctic ice sheets at 27 million cubic kilometers, Greenland at 3 million cubic kilometers, and glaciers, which only accounts for a relatively minuscule 158,000 cubic kilometers. Number four, atmospheric rivers move as much as seven to 15 times as much water as the Mississippi River. Anytime you look up and see a cloud, you're seeing water in the sky. But how much is up there? We saw that a volcano can add a lot, and so can cornfields for that matter but that's just the start of it. There are actual atmospheric rivers that move almost unbelievable quantities of water across the planet, all in the skies above. The name atmospheric river refers to the paths of moisture that can take water from tropical regions towards either of the poles and greatly affect weather patterns along the way. The water evaporates at the equator and then it circulates away in the atmosphere, almost dragging more water behind it in a narrow but high volume band. While we can look at rivers like the Amazon and the Mississippi and think they are high volume, they have nothing like atmospheric rivers, which can carry 7 to 15 times as much water as the average daily discharge of the Mississippi. Some have been shown to move up to 26 cubic kilometers per day. And once it gets pushed up over mountains and into cooler climates, it will condense and rain down once more. Number 3. The atmosphere contains more fresh water than all the rivers on Earth combined. Knowing how much water an atmospheric river can move, you have to wonder how much water is in the atmosphere in general. The answer may not be surprising at this point, but it's a lot. In fact, there is more fresh water above us than there is in all the rivers on the planet. Rivers lay claim to about 0.0001% of all the world's water, but the atmosphere actually holds 0.001%. That actually works out to 12,900 cubic kilometers of water in the air. That's around 3.4 quadrillion gallons. Compare that to the relatively small 2,120 cubic kilometers that you'll find in the world's rivers. Number 2. Super Ionic Ice is a fourth phase of water most of us know the three phases of water, which consist of vapor, liquid, and solid. In 2021, scientists discovered a fourth phase, and it may actually be more common than the other three. It's also far more extreme than the kinds we're used to. Known as superionic ice, this substance is like ice, but it's hot, it's black, and it exists inside planets. Researchers even created some in a lab by using lasers to raise water temperature by thousands of degrees while simultaneously subjecting it to millions of atmospheres of pressure like water in the center of a massive icy planet. It froze solid into hot, crystalline ice. If you were to burrow to the center of Neptune, you might find a superionic ice core. The stuff made in the lab only lasted a moment, but under constant temperature and pressure, it could be the center of one of these distant worlds. But it's also believed to exist in the Earth, where it plays a part in how our magnetic field works. Number 1. There are 326 million trillion gallons of water on Earth. All of this talk about water, and in particular large volumes of it, may make you start wondering just how much of the stuff we have lying around. Well, it's a lot. In fact, it's one of those numbers that's so big some people won't even write it out properly. Many sources will say that we have 326 million trillion gallons of water in the world. Now, technically speaking, a million trillion isn't a real number, and that vernacular seems to be done in an effort to try and make it a little easier to comprehend than simply saying we have 326 quintillion quintillion gallons because, well, what the heck is a quintillion and how could any average person even hope of picturing such a thing? Well, despite the massive volume, only the smallest amount of it is drinkable. Less than 3% of all that water is fresh water, about 68% of that is frozen in glaciers, and 30% is underground. Most of our fresh water comes from rivers, which accounts for about 1 10,000th of 1% of all the water in the world.